Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we're learning how we can become better leaders at all levels. Now, let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WishAfrica1 with the hashtag Wish. So, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. So, Kemi, while you were talking about the 12 Cs, you know, the, 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 char the characteristics of a leader, right? you mentioned two things that struck me, communication and consequence. I want to understand what, how consequence ties up, you know, to the C. Then for communication, you know, we are very horrible communicators here in this part of the world. You know, so how do we even improve that skill to become better leaders, right? Mm -hmm. Because we want to say something and, you know, we don't even know how to talk to the people that we're leading. You know, and this cuts across all levels. In families, in the home, parents cannot communicate with their children. At workplace, bosses cannot communicate with their subordinates. You know, team leaders cannot communicate. It's, it's just a big issue. Communication, there's a huge communication gap. So let's start with consequence. When you say consequence, I want to understand what consequence means and also communication. Uh, so consequence really has to do with the uh, framework, which is the dozen model is helping leaders get to the point where they understand that there are consequences for their actions and there are also consequences for their inactions hmm. okay so what do you invest your time on as a leader for example you know so i hear someone who wants to be a great business leader but then all you do is spending time you know watching tv lounging and hanging out you're not going to get the results that you want that way. Therefore, you also have to be in that place where you're able to deal with the consequences of your choices. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we have people, uh, you know, leaders in different expression, either on the family level, we have leaders in workplaces, uh, we have entrepreneurs, we even have leaders on the political scene who want to do and then get away with it. But then we have to understand that there are consequences for our actions. And leaders have to be comfortable with dealing with the consequences of those actions. So, for example, uh, you know, I, I would have to uh, give this example on the political scene. So there's this uh, Senator Abo, you know, yes. who um, went on to, to slap a lady at a sex toy shop, right? Yeah. And because of how we dealt with that issue, there was no consequence for that mm -hmm. action. You saw that it, you know, we have pretty much encouraged him to continue doing that. A few weeks back, another video leaked of this guy slapping someone again. So until we get to that point where leaders understand that there are consequences for action and also people who they lead, you know, also understand that there should be consequences for action, we will not get to the point where we're able to explore the full depth of leadership. All right. So until people know that, you know, when I act in a particular way, there will be certain consequences that will come to me mm. based on my actions and inactions. We will not get to the point where we're really raising leaders that can stand the true test of time. So that's the essence of, you know, um, consequences in that framework. OK. And then when we come to communication. communication. Uh, okay, you, you, you spoke already about the fact that we have challenges with communication and all. But here's the thing when it comes to communication, you know, there's what we call intrapersonal communication, which is communication first with yourself. So you are communicating with yourself as an individual, as a leader, whether you are aware or not. Mm -hmm. You know, you're communicating through your thoughts, you're communicating through your feelings, you're communicating through the expression of your behavior. Okay, so the first person you're communicating with every day is you. And we have people who step into leadership positions who are not aware of the kind of communication that goes on inside of them. They're not aware of their thoughts, uh, they're not aware of you know even how they feel and how all of this eventually affects their behavior. So as a leader, it is important that you're building from that place of interpersonal communication, you're developing your ability to communicate effectively with yourself, you're developing your ability you know, to own positive thoughts. I always say that if some people have the opportunity to listen to their thoughts hmm. and how they think about themselves, 
Their body will run in one direction, their yeah. spirit will run in the other direction, their soul will run away. You know, so it starts with how do you see yourself? How do you communicate with yourself? What things are you telling yourself as a leader? Because I always say that you cannot become better at what you do unless you become better at who you are. Sure. You cannot have a great image or a great persona if you do not see yourself first as being a person of value. You cannot give what you don't have. So how do you communicate with yourself? And then the other dimension is how you communicate with other people, which is interpersonal communication. A lot of times we talk, right? But then we are not communicating. Just like you said, in the home front, we have parents who are barely able to say anything with their kids. You know, in their mind, they have a relationship with that child. But then when it comes to being able to establish true, deep communication, true, deep connection, there is nothing to write home about. You don't understand their feelings. You don't understand what they are going through. You don't even have avenue to express each other. You know, it's just about, have you eaten? How are you doing today? Fine, mommy. And in your mind, you have communicated. You haven't communicated with that child. Also in the workplace, we have people who assume that they have communicated certain ex um, you know, expectations as it has to do with their employees. But then communication is way beyond talking. It is about being able to create deep and lasting, you know, pathways and relationship with people. Being able to express and communicate in a way that the person you have communicated with understands exactly what you want them to do. So also in the nation, you know, and if, if I would cast us back to um, the recent happening in terms of the answers, right? We saw that a lot of things happened, a lot of things went wrong, uh, but then look at how communication broke down drastically. You know, for, for a very long time, there were a lot of denials here and there, um, blame trading here and mm. there. Nobody actually came up to, you know, take responsibility. Nobody came up to, you know, address people in a way that uh, they feel good about themselves. Nobody really came out to uh, be able to empathize with people. Okay, so when it comes to communication, it is way different. It is, it's just way beyond the fact that you open your mouth and you say something. What is that message that you have communicated? That's How very key. Is you know, the message also received. How has that message been interpreted? Those are the things that we need to become more aware of as leaders. Mm -hmm. What are you communicating with your, you know, to, to your kids? Even when you're not talking, you are saying something. Mm -hmm. So leaders have to be very, very conversant around all of this um, and be at that place where we are improving our skills and our competence around these things, uh, around these elements. But then it starts with, you know, you as a leader, be intentional. Mm -hmm. So I say that you can unintentionally or you can unconsciously become a bad leader. Mm -hmm. But to become a great leader, it will only happen from that place of intentionality, yes. which means that you are able to define your values. You are able to define the principles that form the core of who you are. Mm -hmm. And you hold yourself accountable to those standards even when nobody is looking um, at you. Absolutely. You know, I was going to say something, Jennifer. Sorry, let me <laughs> come in here. Because when you were talking, you really hit the nail on some things that I wanted to talk about, especially when it comes to crisis management and uh, managing conflicts, right, as leaders. I see this happen all the time. I mean, there's a recent story going around um, the Deeper Life um, um, school, you know, and you can see that this is failure of leadership in terms of the school management, also the government trying to step in, you know, there's a, a huge failure of leadership because I, I mean, when you're talking communication, I wish if they had sat down and communicated love, communicated empathy, communicated compassion, you know, towards the plight of the child, I don't think the mother would be crazy, in, you know, and say she wants to still go all over social media. If they had communicated that, come, we are in this thing together and we'll find a solution to it, right? So this, this issue, it's a very big issue. But because we really don't have time when we are talking about things like this, I wanted you to harp on something that I, I said before we went on the break. Obsolete structures. So for instance, I know that we have created a blueprint, right? And this blueprint, for, uh, for, 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 for the life of me, things have changed. Yeah. So see what we saw in 2020. 
2020 completely changed the structure of a lot of companies, a lot of things, a lot of how people did business, how people interacted and everything. It completely is a completely new era, right? But for people that are stuck in those obsolete structures where it has to be brick and mortar, and when I'm talking, I'm talking also even in terms of churches, because I've, see it have, I've seen, seen this play out even with churches and all of that. How do you think the leader should begin to approach this? And what if, if they choose to decide to stay with that obsolete structure, what is the consequence for them as leaders? That's it. So, so um, you know, you, you know when they say that you adapt or die, right? We know the story of uh, the dinosaur and the fact that the dinosaur, um, based on research, uh, you know, is an extinct animal uh, because it could not adapt to times and seasons. Yeah. Uh, so definitely for organizations that, that have leadership that fail to adapt uh, to the business environment uh, that we find ourselves, they will also get to die that untimely death. So we see um, businesses, uh, you know, I, I think I was talking recently about Nokia, I was talking about Blackberry. You know, and in that time, if you did not have a BlackBerry, you don't even start that day. You need to have a PIN day. number. <laughs> you, have to start, you don't have a PIN number. But then, time and seasons have changed. And organizations that were not able to quickly, um, you know, read and interpret the changes in the business environment at that time, they were not able to understand where customer needs was going at that time, found themselves at the far end, you know, of, of being thrown away in, in the market. A lot of businesses, um, you know, in the, in the telecommunication space lost huge market share. You can imagine Nokia trying to just scramble to find a place in the market even till now. So businesses that fail to adapt uh, will die. And, that, and that's the truth. And this is because this will not go back totally to how it used to be. So here we have, um, um, you know, schools, for example, that had to learn how to start teaching virtually. It demanded a new type of skills from teachers, for example. It, 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 it required, you know, a new way of thinking. So remember that I said earlier that it starts with cognitive readiness. Yeah. So it will be about this is the way we have always been doing it. Uh -huh. Because the way we have always been doing it will not exist anymore. It would be about how can we start doing it, you know, and remain relevant in today's world. The change, uh, the, the taste of customers, um, you know, and consumers is changing, uh, you know, constantly by the speed of life. So, how is your business also responding to this change? What and you everything, need to learn from yes, and everything is going to rise and fall on the leadership structure of that organization. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we say that the quality and effectiveness of leadership within organizations will be the major determinant of organizations that will die, those that will survive, and those that will thrive. The okay. quality and effectiveness of leadership within organizations is what will determine that. Hmm. Okay, so if we want to wrap up this conversation, right, going back to our, our topic, which is the wholesome leader, what is the definition of wholesomeness? Because I know that, you know, in all of these things, we need to strike a balance in what you said, I think you said you mentioned it in the earlier part of the conversation when we talked about balanced life, where you have a balanced home front, a balanced this, a balanced that, then everything now coming together. So if we want to build a wholesome leader, right, where do we start from? Should we start from the family structure, from when the person is a child? Or if the person is already an adult, you know, how do we even start from that point? You know, for, for where, because for where we are, for instance, in Nigeria, it will take the grace of God, <laughs> you know, because there's a lot of, there's a lot that has gone wrong in terms of our ideology of what leadership should look like. So it takes a lot of unlearning and unlearning and relearning. So where do we start from if we want to build and create a wholesome leader? So, 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 so um, I, I think building a wholesome leadership is about understanding that, you know, as an individual, you cannot totally separate your family life from your business, you know, and the expression of leadership across those areas. So the problem that we are looking at it from how do we develop leadership 
um, as a lifestyle? How do we adopt leadership as a lifestyle to ensure that wherever you find yourself, in whatever expression of leadership you find yourself, there is that level of consistency in terms of your values. So, for example, I do not need to invite um, Obama to this meeting to know what some of his values are, right? When I have um, sessions, uh, training sessions, and I ask people, so who is um, the, the leader that comes to mind for you when the subject of leadership is mentioned? You hear people say Obama, and then you hear things like, oh, his great oratory skills, his charisma. But then he never called anyone to a meeting to tell them, oh, you know what, I'm a great orator, um, you know, I have great charisma. But people were able to pick, you know, and deduce those skills based on how he lives his life, based on how he relates with people, based on, you know, the level of excellence that he shows up with over and over again. So it starts with taking personal responsibility. Mm. You know, we have to get to that point where we understand the place first of self-leadership, that until you can lead yourself, you will struggle to lead other people. Leadership is not just about being able to guide and instruct and all of that. No, it starts with your ability to lead yourself to achieve great results in the different areas of your life. So the question will be, who do you want to be as an individual? Mm. What are the responsibilities on your shoulders? And how do you start stepping into that place of responsibility? I, I, I wrote a book, you know, it's called The Leadership Guardian. And The Leadership Guardian is about getting individuals to that place of responsibility, helping people achieve that level of consciousness to understand the responsibility that has been placed on their shoulders right from where they are, you know, being able to lead right from where they are. So leaders have to get to that point of defining who do I want to be, right, as a leader at home. Mm -hmm. Who do I want to be as a leader at work? In my community, who do I want to be? What change do I want to bring? Mm -hmm. And when you are able to define that, then you will know exactly what traits, what values do I need to start embodying to and be able to show up as this leader. Okay. So it starts from that place of self-leadership. Yeah. It starts from that place of taking responsibility. Yeah. It starts from that place of being clear mm. as to who exactly you want to be mm -hmm. and what your roles, your responsibility on this surface of this earth is and then stepping into it. Absolutely. I think you've, you've really happed it very well and, and you've wrapped it up nicely for me because... Um, if we do this and we get that personal, um, that personal, those personal answers that you reeled out, who do you want to be as a person and all of that, if you get it right at that micro level or macro level, you will get it bet, uh, uh, right also whenever you go to a, a larger scale or a global scale. That's it. I mean, so it, it starts from that personal um, uh, questions that you must ask yourself as a leader. I, I'm hoping that we'll be able to do more of this because for us it's about building and creating that awareness. I like what you said about mind shift. I think when we get to that mind consciousness where we know that this is important and is necessary, maybe again we'll start to see some positive changes. Thank you so much, Kemi. <laughs> yeah. You've been an amazing Thank you guest. Very much for that. Thank you so much. Uh, Jennifer, you want to say something? Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> quickly, in one minute. Okay, so to just round it up. So basically, I think what everyone should take home today is um, for you to be a leader, you have to start from personal growth. Yeah. So you have to groom yourself first. You have to improve on yourself, on your skills, on everything surrounding you. Mm. And aside that, as after personal growth, you need to be able to balance different aspects of your life because mm -hmm. they are all they, are, they will definitely come into question Absolutely. your family your personal life your business the people you relate with on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. well yeah thank you kemi for for that insightful um conversation. conversation absolutely all right so as um jennifer just said it's been a very insightful conversation and keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Weisho Africa 1 on Twitter, at Weisho Africa on IG, and at Weisho on Facebook as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote again, here it is again. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. It's very, very, very deep. It's very, very apt. Go and think about it very well. 
absorb it and make sure that you are an inspiration to everyone around you at all levels. We'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. Thank you.